Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Factorio here in our step-by-step -step to Megabase series. In the previous episode we installed this module right here in order to process our oil, create the various liquid and some sulfur. We also have train stations to collect all of these materials and so today finally it's time to go a little bit bigger in terms of crafting hub. So in between the episodes I already prepared this junction here in order to get my trains downstairs and what I would like to see is my train stations cuddled up right here. The problem is we still have this vein in the way with 654,000 ore to be grabbed. So that unfortunately is quite a tall order and we cannot do it within a reasonable amount of time if we just check this out at 36 per second. If we put this up to an hour we only get 129,000 per hour and uh, we would have to wait for quite a while. So unfortunately there's going to be some iron left over. So what I would like to see is for my train to go up here and so we just connected to this line wonderful gonna continue all the way up and then somewhere around here i'm gonna have my first station now i already got a uh let me see liquid unloading that's what i want now where exactly are we gonna place this first station i'm not sure we want to get back at the same spot here so something along these lines and do the same thing right here. Now this is not going to leave us enough space for two trains unless maybe we put it a little bit further over like here. Wait on the other side do I really need two trains for this? Not really. Yeah honestly two trains are not necessary so I'm not even going to bother with that and I'm rather going to have it centered between the two power poles there. Okay, very nice. Now let's get rid of these miners. All of this will have to go, I'm afraid. And now we should be able to set up a second station and a third station. Those are going to be the three liquids we have to transport. And maybe we should make a fourth station for the water. Yeah, that's not the worst of ideas. So we have it kind of completed. Then in terms of materials, I want to start with the ore and the stone first. We are going to need, well, coal, then stone and a little bit of iron ore. The iron ore will be mostly to craft the concrete. So that would be station unloading that we want to have here. One, then two, and the third one, I need to make space for that. Now it would be great if a train came and actually collected these materials. Can you do that for me, please? Thank you. Looking good. Wow, this is filling up quickly. I'm afraid we're not gonna have enough. Yeah, oh no, half of the chests are still somewhat full. Well, let me keep planning this out. We had the three stations here for stone, coal and iron ore. Then we get to the smelted materials, which would be iron, then copper, then steel. Hmm. And then what else? Ah, hang on, the sulfur, of course. But everything else I already got or will be crafted. But I did forget the sulfur, so we'll have to implement that as well. And this would be the last of our stations in order to get everything that we require to build everything for the crafting hub. Gosh, I just really hope I didn't forget anything this way. But now this means we can go ahead and expand these rails. Another train came. Maybe we can get rid of the chests now. Yeah, looks like this helped a lot. And now we just bring back down each of these rails. Else. easy peasy so we don't even have to think about this too much just go down 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 connect all of these together like so and then this will be able to go back into these rails this should be the last train and then empty all of our chests and then the same spiel on the other side well this is going to be a mega train station but this is not going to be running the risk of congestion because it's just a crafting hub and doesn't require that many materials so most of the lines will not have to come here on a mega regular basis. Maybe one change I'm going to implement to these modules is moving the balancer over to the other side just because we have it on this side too and this would make it even more symmetrical. And then these guys might also just go straight to be honest with you. Let me actually see. Can I get out of here? No, actually it's not enough. But I could go ahead and do this, of course. Yeah, sure. And then for the next one, it would already be enough. 
Yeah, I think I would actually like this a little bit better. So let's make sure we hook things up this way. Good. Right now, everything is empty here. So we're going to disassemble the old station and rail. And oh my gosh, a train actually managed to get stuck here. I think we should be able to fix that if we just turn this around. Um, let me see. Can we can we make it in here? Uh, yeah, that looks about right. And now the train can uh, fortunately just turn around and hopefully no other train is going to make this mistake now. And we can just go ahead and get rid of these tracks. Wonderful. Very nice. That means we're finally capable of copying this over. And I should just be able to do that, right? Uh, no, I copied over too much. Let's just get the belts and the stations. That should be good. And now we can just copy all of this down. Oh, oh I'm making mistakes. Yes, yeah, something is weird here. This rail didn't look the same. Ah, I see the problem. The upper rail is set for the liquid stations, of course. So what I have to do is copy over the lower station. That should be better. Now it actually fits. Okay, so get all of that installed. And that is going to be our mega station. I kind of like it. Now, of course, we mustn't forget to signal everything. Let's set up a chain signal here before the intersection. It's going to be quite interesting, but I guess we can just set up chain signals everywhere, right? Hang on, that might actually not make sense. What if we just have one here and then have rail signals behind each of these intersections? Oh no, wait, this is pointing into the wrong direction. Whoops. Yeah, we had to rotate this with R. And now that's interesting. When I actually set up the last one, then everything gets divided up. Okay, that is good. Now the trains will have to wait here when another train is going even to the upper section. And I don't like that. Either we could try to set up another chain signal here for each intersection. And that might actually just work out. Yeah, now it's just being divided into these little sections. Wonderful. That seems to be good enough. Let's set up a chain signal behind each of the stations as well. Chain signal for each of these intersections. And then finally, this is going to go into each of the directions again. Go over here. We can add some more chain signals here and there. And then a rail signal here. Uh, maybe another chain signal there. Okay, nice. I like that. Let's maybe set up another signal here so more trains can go. And then that should be the end of the story. Now, honestly, we probably don't need four lines. We most definitely don't need that many. So my suggestion would be to maybe for now get rid of uh, three lines and then we can add more should we need them. Or is this going to be a mistake? I mean, how am I going to bring these up? Like they will all have to travel upstairs and then when I have them next to each other, it's going to look ugly if I change the order. Hmm. Yeah, I will have to think about that. For now, we have to stock up on materials. I'm going to be right back. Okay, I decided for a placement for my belt. You can see that right here. Right now, we're trying to bring them all the way up to approximately this position in order to line them up within provider chests. Just as a little reminder, right here, we're going to have our crafting hub. So right there needs to be all of our materials. We're bringing up the raw materials in order to bring them into chests and provide them to the system. But eventually we also need to tap into secondary lines in order to provide that to whatever we are crafting. For instance, to get the red circuits or the blue circuits, we'll have to set up something that is just dedicated to the system. And we have these three squares in order to do so. Well, technically we also have these squares here on the sides. I'm not sure how much this is gonna expand over time but my suggestion would be to now get these train stations going you can see we have water petroleum light oil lubricant stone coal iron ore then we have sulfur we have a little bit of iron plates copper plates and steel plates these should be all the basic ingredients that we don't have access to mm, actually sulfuric acid i'm gonna produce yeah that would have to go into the list here. Yeah, I think I'm going to be making sulfuric acid on site because it does require iron plates. So without any further ado, let's maybe fix the rails and that should get my trains going. Now, if we check the trains, some of them should go. Yeah, we got the iron train going for it and the next one is loading up. That is good. We don't have any trains 
for the copper plates just yet, so I might want to add those myself. Let me see, where is copper here on the second one? So I'm going to add uh, two copper trains because we do have the space inside the loading station for two copper trains, right? Oh no, I cannot really add that here. Okay, but let's set this up. Oh, they are not connected. Let me see. What did I do? They should be connected. Yeah, I mean, we have all of these trains already incoming. The iron is being filled up and then ah, no path. What did I do? So at some point, there must be something missing only in this direction. Yeah, I kind of have to find the culprit, but we should be able to see it here here ah look at that look at this little booger here i can literally not place it chain signal is in the way okay maybe i did something weird let's just uh, take apart this bit and then we should be able to replace the intersection without issues okay and now the trains can actually move at least they should be moving out yeah one after another hopefully without accidents Come on, where's the next one? Yes, yes, okay, very good. However, that still means we don't have any trains for all the other materials. We will now have to add many, many, many trains. So without any further ado, let's set this up. Now I can actually select them in a activity no full cargo and then in activity we're gonna unload that and full empty cargo in activity okay you can go ahead and load up i'm gonna give you some fuel hmm, maybe i should be collecting fuel yeah i'm actually gonna grab a whole bunch of trains and a little bit of initial fuel actually that reminds me we need an additional station for the fuel so if i copy this over let me see maybe i'm just gonna do that and let's see i should be able to flip this over if i remove the signals so now we flip this and i should be able to you know just add the station here somewhere yeah that looks about right and we just have an additional station and of course this is also going to be uh, for the fuel and we can have a train limit of one here and i actually would like to make this my main fuel station so here i'm also gonna dump everything and this might just be the loading part to be honest with you yeah i think that is a good idea we can have some stack inserters here and then a belt going over and then instead of this shebang right here we can now go ahead multiply these lines like so and then just feed them to each inserter and then of course this would continue as usual we add some more signals and this would also be coming from here naturally good now we have a way for our train to actually come here and then i guess what we also have to do is feed it to the train so i kind of want to make sure that we can get these into our trains of course Nice. So far, so good. Now, I just have to make sure to fill this up with an awful lot of fuel. And then what I can do is set up a train here with just one wagon. And this time around, we actually want to name the stations. At the moment, the best fuel we have is solid fuel. So I'm just going to load up solid fuel here. That will be our main loading station. And as of this point, the train is just going to distribute the fuel across everywhere. So then without any further ado, let's pick up some fuel. Let me see. I don't really have a lot of space in my inventory, do I? Oh, well, it should be enough to at least get a little something going. Oh, no, my Spidertron isn't even capable of helping. Maybe we should just build another Spidertron at this point. I think it is about time. In the end, we're going to have Spidertrons responsible for various tasks. For instance, I would like to see a Spidertron with all the materials necessary to build certain modules in one go without me actually having to do it. For instance, like the solar panels. This is a perfect task for a different Spidertron. Hang on, I need a little bit of power here. Can I easily do that? Yeah. Turn these around. They were facing the wrong way. And now the train is being fueled up. Perfect. Now we just have to set up the other stations. There are going to be quite a few stations. So I'm not even sure I have enough fuel. But we only want to get about 2,500, which is uh, 25 stacks, right? Does it stack up to... Oh no, it stacks up to 50. I can have 10, 20, 30, 40 in one chest times four. Yeah, okay, that seems to be a reasonable number. So let's swap that to unload solid fuel. And then as soon as my train is full, it should be continuing. No, wait, I first need to set it up. Load solid fuel, uh, full cargo in activity, and then unload... Where is it? The solid fuel, come on, come on. Hang on. Stop is inaccessible from current position. That is interesting. That is very curious. We come up here and then we should be able to go there. 
Hmm, that's really interesting. I should be able to reach it unless I made a mistake with the signaling, maybe. Uh, this is coming down. No, that's okay. Let me see if I copy this over for the next station, if that behaves in a similar way or new. No, I still cannot reach it. Wait, maybe I can and I'm just stupid. Let's run this. So there was a little bit of inactivity and now the train is going for it. Okay, where are you going? You're going, whoop. You're going to the secondary station. So maybe there was really no pathway here. And while you look at that, it's already coming back. It looks as though, ooh, the second station still didn't have enough. Let me briefly get rid of a rail here. I want to prevent it from going out. Because what I want to check now is we have... Ooh, how can we only have 222? Of course, that makes sense. But that still makes me want to change the number here to maybe 1,000 only. So 1,000 is going to be when we want to send more trains over. And now we can just copy and paste this to all of the stations here. And I believe that was everything, right? Okay. Let's set this up again. There we go. A little bit more fuel for us. Let's add it here as well. And look at that. The inserters aren't actually doing anything when the train is already on its way. Honestly, that makes me reconsider this a little bit. Maybe we're gonna wait until full cargo and not inactivity. Or we just wait a certain amount of time. Or we would do a circuit condition, but that seems a little bit excessive. Uh, I think inactivity is the best because as soon as we have our stations full, then it's just going to wait in this condition. So for now, let's uh, reconnect this. Let the train go. And then here I'm going to give this a stack of fuel myself. And now it says destination full. Oh no, what did I do? What? Go, 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 go. This was copper plates, of course. Load copper plates. What am I doing? And it's actually already going now. Then unload copper until empty cargo. Okay, okay. Now we're actually talking. And I can also go ahead and set up the second train here, which is now being fueled automatically. This is good. And then we can just uh, copy over the settings here, paste it here. And that is going to be good. We already have enough fuel to get started once. Good. Next up, I'm going to do the steel train. So you want to go ahead and collect some steel until full cargo, etc. I'm not going to start this just yet because we need more wagons. Next up would be the sulfur. We want two trains for that as well. We already got the iron ore trains. What is this here? This is uh, coal. Yeah, we already got coal trains as well. As a matter of fact, this should be found over here. There are my two coal trains waiting at the coal vein. And all we have to do is program the rest. So unload coal and then empty cargo and then i can just copy this over for the other train and my coal train should be arriving soon yeah there's the coal train what is this guy doing here uh, collecting some more copper okay yeah this looks about right what are we missing here the steel now the coal is finally incoming that is good we still need trains for the stone or do we let me think no we already have the stone here so i also just have to reprogram them to also dump the stone at U stone. And it could be that I don't have them fueled. Yeah, of course, that is a little bit of a mistake. That means I now have to make my way all the way over here just to give them some fuel. How depressing. But yeah, let me just go ahead and set up the rest of the trains. I'm gonna basically go after the principle of having two trains per loading scenario that I have going on. So right now I have one station for iron plates and therefore we have two trains. If I had multiple stations, we can have two additional trains. And that's how it's going to work. Good, I'm here. You can have some fuel and then you can have some fuel too. And that should be enough to get those guys started. Yeah, you and you are now filling up. Good, give me a brief moment. Well, looks like I need to collect my robots here. I always forget to disable the RoboPort. But either way, I'm going to be right back once all the materials are being shipped in. Look at that. My train is coming here again. I really don't like this scenario where it just runs off without actually having enough stuff in it. So I really think I should be filling it up completely. So I'm just going to wait until it's full cargo. But then when delivering the fuel, it can also be time sensitive. Okay, I'm back and I've made substantial progress. I now got trains or at least two trains for all of the loading scenarios. There is another train incoming. This is the sulfur train and we should be able to fill this up rather quickly. Now a quick glance at my fuels here on the right side. 
indicates that we are constantly using up the heavy oil to create lubricant. Also, the light oil is still going into these bins and afterwards, once we have the light oil filled up, it's gonna take care of producing more petroleum. But we definitely need more machinery here. This is not enough. So don't worry about that, we're gonna fix it. Right now, what I need to see is all of these trains going. I don't think I enabled them. Uh, yeah, there we go. Now it's actually filling up this train. That's good. You can also go. Do I have... Yeah, I have a little bit of fuel for them. Then we got the two light oil trains and finally the two petroleum trains right there. Now, honestly, with the liquid trains, the inactivity is probably not gonna work because it's always just... A little bit you know so i think instead of inactivity we should really go for a uh, time passed option and i'm gonna put this all the way to the max can i go even higher i don't think i can oh i can okay so let's do about three minutes or so yeah that looks reasonable but we'll have to check if that really makes sense because it's also not worth it to just go with an empty train. Well then, let's get another one of these rolling. Wonderful, that's already producing. And then when we come back to our station here on the map, we can already see a lot of them are full and they have shut down. Right here, we're now bringing in some light oil. No, that had five seconds of inactivity. Yeah, I'm not so convinced about the solution yet. I think the trains are gonna settle down much better once the first loads are actually completely filled up. But right now, of course, we are struggling a little bit with the light oil. Wait a second. Uh, I did not hook up the light oil, actually. Yeah, okay, that kind of makes sense now. Let's uh, push this over. I must have messed this up a little bit. Would have been better to have the train station set up differently. Change the order a little bit to have these pipes orderly. But, you know, this is good. It's gonna do as well. And now we are finally filling up the light oil. Now, this should go a little bit quicker, in my opinion. Yeah, why doesn't this go quicker? I mean, we have all of this light oil ready and it should be shipped out here. Maybe we do have to set up some more pumps. Let me try that. So if I have three more pumps like so and then connected these like so at a power pole, is this gonna fill it up faster? No. I still don't regret setting up the pumps because, of course, we first want to fill up all of these stations so we can ship the fluids around. So my suggestion would be to just keep going with this. I'm going to add at least two more, uh, maybe three more, uh, maybe four more. Yeah, let's do it. And all of these can go full speed. Of course, they're still missing the module. Maybe we can go back and actually snatch up some. Okay, now a light oil train is incoming that is actually full. There it is incoming going over mm -hmm. like that and it should be emptied rather quickly you know that's what's confusing me i had these four pumps so theoretically the wagon should fill up as quickly as it empties right and i think i'm gonna limit the amount of fuel this train can carry so it is full a lot sooner and there it already goes okay nice and here we have our materials all we have to do is bring them all the way up we also already have three of the four fluids ready. One is actually the water and I suspect for now we can do something similar since I don't want to set up a water train if I have the water available right there. So I'm going to set up this offshore pump that is going to allow us to hook up the water. Pump over here and then just do that. Okay, and now we can just uh, copy this over and make our way up. Oh yeah, materials follow my lead. Now looking at this, I think I want to move these over to the sides. And if we remove them from the top down, the liquid isn't going to be lost, but it's going to be pushed over. Okay, now I like this setup much better. The lines are just going out and lining up here. This is much better. And now I can go ahead and bring these liquids up again. I'm going to bring them all the way up here and around the corner with two spaces from the poles. Unfortunately, I ran out of belts again, but this is going to be their final destination and where they will be introduced into the logistics network. Wonderful. All the materials will be lined up here and we can put them into active provider chests. This is going to be the only circumstance where we're actually using active provider chests. And we basically need one for each material. So at least seven of these chests and I'm getting my materials back in the meantime. Let's also pick up some more fuel while we're at it and then make our way back. There's the rest of my belts and pipes. I'm gonna set up the chests on this level 
that looks reasonable. And then we just use stack inserters to get them inside. Do we want to limit this? Definitely for the active provider chests. Basically everything that lands in these chests is going to be sent to the network. Wherever there is space for it, they're going to be sent to. This also means whenever this chest is full, the network is satisfied. So for these active provider chests, I'm just going to leave one row of space inside the chests actually i could just have copied it over but what you're gonna do and then as for the liquids we're just gonna ship them to wherever we need them inside the crafting system very nice now this is actually pretty huge to have a dedicated system like this for our crafting hub and that means in the next episode we should be able to set up the most important things in order to be able to keep on building what do we need first and foremost we need to mass produce beacons and modules Everything else we are getting currently enough of inside of the base. And then when we have this going for us, it will be time to make the first mega module. Where I'm basically producing a certain amount of science packs. And it's going to be one ginormous contraption that we can later blueprint. And I'm going to have to divide this over a couple of episodes because it is a huge project. Basically, we're building this. Well, it's not refined yet, but this is what I would like to see as one module. So we produce exactly half a yellow belt of science packs. And all we have to do is make a train station that accommodates all of these materials and the rest will be doing inside of the module. This way we can come up with something compact. Well, compact. It's going to be maybe this size here. I don't know yet. But I will be containing it within a square of the city blocks. And therefore, we should be able to copy it over whenever we want more signs. And as of this point, it should be quite easy, hopefully. Maybe in the next episode, it will be worth it to first set up the crafting hub. And then we'll have to see how we're going to proceed as of this point. But yeah, I would say with that out of the way, we're going to wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye bye.